with these basic two questions answered. Let us study more properties of the hard covering number f column phi. And we will call this lemma 1. More properties of f column phi. Suppose f and g are in cc non negative g. Here, this notation simply means they are in a set of functions in CCG, compact supported continuous functions on G that are non negative. We do not require that they have a positive supremum. Unlike our definition for cc plus g, where we really assume that f can attain at some point a positive value. Namely, f cannot be constantly zero for cc plus g. But at this point, we allow f and g to be constant zero. And we suppose phi is in cc plus g. Then, with these assumptions, we have first f column phi is equal to the left translation of f column phi. Namely, any left translation do not change this hard covering number with respect to functions. And second, a non-negative multiple of f will simply scale this hard covering number by that multiple. This is for any c greater or equal to zero. Third, if we take the sum of f and g and consider its hard covering number with respect to phi, you get an inequality. This is less than or equal to f column phi plus g column phi. And we can give a name for properties B and C. We can call it positive sub linearity. The last property is the following F comp phi is less than or equal to f column g times g column phi whenever g is non-zero. Or in other words, g is in cc plus g. So that this part will be non-zero. which is addressed by an answer to a previous question. Here. And this part D can be called the tower property.
for the hard copy number. With respect to functions. All those four properties are very easy to prove, so you may want to pause this video and do it yourself. But I will give you the answer anyway. So now pause this video and uh, come back if you get stuck. Okay, so for convenience, let me always grab this definition for f column phi. So how to prove part A? Part A is true, this inequality is true, because f is less than or equal to this linear combination sum if and only if its left translation is less than or equal to the corresponding obvious linear combination. This is for all x in g. The only thing that you have to be very careful is that you better not flip the order of x and xj here. You're going to be very careful about this part. So if you have this equivalence, then you get the same infimum. That will give you this inequality. This is part A. Now part B is also easy. F less than or equal to Again, this linear combination, if and only if c times f is less than or equal to this obvious linear combination. And part c, how about part c? Part C follows from following implication. If f is less than this linear combination, sum from j equal to 1 to m of c sub j times l sub xj of v, and g is less than or equal to the summation from j equal to m plus 1 to n of c sub j times l sub xj times phi. Then f plus g is less than or equal to the summation from j equal to 1 to n of c sub j times l sub xj times phi. Here, although we write in this way, we do allow those coefficients and those x sub j's to repeat. We will allow that. But anyway, this implication will give us this inequality. Namely, the infimum for the coefficient here will be always less than or equal to the sum of the infimum of coefficient here. This verifies this, the part C. The part D is a product relation. It might be slightly complicated, but for part D, if f is less or equal to the linear combination c times l sub xj times g. Notice that here we have already used the assumption that g is non zero. 
if g is constant zero, then we cannot even set up this inequality. Because if f is positive somewhere, but g is constant zero, then this inequality may not hold. So because g is not constant zero, this inequality makes sense. If we have this and the g is less or equal to this linear combination of left translates of v. Here we do not need g to be non-zero. I thought as v is non-zero, we are good. But we assume at the beginning the phi is always non-zero. Here. Now, we plug the second inequality into the first. This gives us f less than equal to the linear combination cj times l sub xj of the linear combination dklxk phi plugged into here and if we simplify this we get a double sum and remember if we look at the sum of coefficients over jk of uh, cj times d case, this can be broken down into the product of sum of cj's times the sum of d case. But the left hand side is greater or equal to the infimum of the all possible sum of coefficients which is by definition f column v and now if you take the infimum on the right hand side over all possible coefficients you will get in the end that f column phi is less than or equal to f column g times g column phi and this verifies this part d and finishes the proof of our lemma 1 on properties of f column phi, the hard covering number with respect to functions.